But of course, you can just watch us live here uh, at the Gigafactory in Austin. Thank you for allowing us to, to be here. Yeah, you're welcome. Uh, it's quite something to just sit and watch for quite some time. Um, yeah, this, this is actually where um, I don't actually have an office here. I, I either walk the floor or I hold meetings in this room. Okay. Um, and um, this room allows me to see what's going on with uh, production uh, while I'm holding meetings. Is there one particular production that you focus on when you're here or that you sort of your eyes always go to or you, you actually walk over to? Um, well, this is the end of line that we're seeing here. So if, uh, if cars aren't moving, um, that means there's, there's some blockage upstream and then I can go and see what that blockage is. Um, so I think we might be on a break right now, uh, but uh, this, if, if this, this is, um, this, if, if vehicle end of line is not moving, that means there's something upstream that's wrong. Got it. Uh, well, it's been amazing just to walk around the facility a bit and get a sense for the size. Um, all right, you just finished your annual meeting. You took a lot of questions from a very eager audience. Um, I feel like most of it you've shared before, but there was some news, and I want to start there. Advertising. You got a big <laughs> applause. You didn't yeah. sound like you were going to advertise that much, but you did at least seem to open the way to saying, okay, we might consider doing some advertising. Why? <clears throat> well, I mean, I believe in listen to, listening to shareholders, and uh, I, I actually was surprised by the level of enthusiasm for advertising, um, since we have not historically done that. Um, but um, the, there perhaps is a, a, some good logic to it in that um, if, if we're simply... Uh, sending out information by, say, the, the Tesla Twitter account or my Twitter account, we're somewhat preaching to the converted um, and, um, and not reaching people that uh, are not already convinced, essentially. So th I think they probably have a good point. We'll, we'll, I mean, I think it's worth a try, and we'll, we'll, see, uh, so we'll see how effective it is. Do you have any idea how you'd like to try it or what that would involve? Um, well, I mean, I have some general thoughts about advertising um, that, uh, that, you know, if, if advertising is informative, um, and, enter, uh, and entertaining, then uh, it is. It, it, it can start to approach content. Um, so I think sometimes advertising is uh, perhaps uh, not informative, or perhaps uh, in, some, in some cases a bit misleading. Um, and in fact, we've, we've lost some advertisers on, on Twitter because Community Notes applies to advertising too. And so if somebody advertises something that isn't um, uh, it's perhaps a, a bit inaccurate, uh, then it gets community noted, mm -hmm. and then they, they get mad and stop advertising. Uh, but we're, we, we care enough about uh, the, the truth that we're willing to give up, adverti give up advertising dollars on Twitter, even if, uh, you know, in, in order to, to uh, in, uh, have the most, the, the least inaccurate uh, right. source and of information. Right, and I want to talk about that, uh, but I want to obviously spend some time on Tesla. Uh, again, back to ads, though. I mean, am I going to start to see Tesla ads during the NFL broadcast on a given Sunday, Monday, Thursday, the NFL's always on. Well, bear in mind, I mean, I only just agreed to it, so it's not like I have a fully formed strategy. Okay. Um, well, how much time does go into when you think about these things? I mean, was it something you decided to do up on stage, or yeah. at least did you know coming in, I may, you know, if this comes up, that I may go there? No, I mean, the, the questions are not scripted in any way. Right. Uh, so, uh, so in that moment, you just said, all right, yeah. we'll do some ads. That's right. So we're only like 20 minutes later, and I'm asking you detailed questions. You yeah, don't have any I, I, answers, I guess. I'm, I'm not sure what, what the most effective thing is, except that, like I said, I believe that advertising should be uh, uh, informative about a product. It should be um, ideally aesthetically pleasing. It should be you know, beautiful. It should have some artistic element to it. Um, and it should be something that uh, you don't regret watching uh, after it's done. Um, and I think if advertising uh, fits those criteria that... Um, it starts to approach content, and that you, you want advertising that is as close to, to content as possible such that you don't regret the time you spent watching it. Mm -hmm. But you did say something as well, which is that you know, you've been preaching to the converted. You mentioned a few statistics, for example, about safety, about price during the meeting that may not be fully understood by the general auto buying yeah. public at large. Uh, yeah, so um, a lot of people still think Teslas are super expensive because we did start out um, with a, an expensive sports car, then like a slightly less expensive sedan and SUV. Um, but now we're at the point where the starting price of a Tesla is actually below the average uh, selling price of a car in, in the United States. So it, uh, Teslas are actually much more affordable than people realize. And so uh, we should just make sure people at least know that. Right. Um, and that uh, Tesla is also the, the safest cars on the road uh, in, in, in so many ways that people actually a lot of people at Tesla don't even know um, you know sort of the cabin overheat protection for example or the fact that we continuously update the automatic emergency braking software and the uh, the, the way the airbags deploy um, 
So we, 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 look, we look at an accident and we say, is there anything we could do from a software standpoint to improve the cars that are already on the road? Um, and then what can we uh, update in the design to improve safety? Um, so, um, and the, I think that you know, the, the statistics uh, speak for themselves. This is not simply a matter of opinion. It's, it's statistically it's, it's safer than anything else. Um, you mentioned affordability. It's something you discussed during your meeting. You've also discussed it a bit on the call, on the earnings call recently as well, uh, in relation to the Federal Reserve raising interest rates and obviously yes. the monthly cost for a typical auto buyer. Mm -hmm. You think it's going to be a tough 12 months ahead. You've said that a few times. Yes, uh, for everyone, not just Tesla. Understood. So it's, uh, um, I mean, it's simply... Uh, you know, you can you can think of raising the Fed Fed rate as as somewhat of a brake pedal in the economy. Frankly, it's so it's um, it, it it makes a lot of things more expensive. Uh, certainly, things that are bought with credit, but then it has downstream effects on on even things that aren't bought with credit. So, um, you know, if if the car payment or your home mortgage payment is absorbing more of your monthly budget, then you have less to, money to buy other things. So actually, it, it affects everything, even those that aren't things that aren't bought on, right. on credit. So. Um, and, and my concern with the, the, with the, the way the, the Federal Reserve is making decisions is that they, they're just operating with um, too much latency. Basically, the, the data is, is, is somewhat stale. So, they, so the Federal Reserve was, was slow to raise interest rates, and, and, and now I think they are, are slow to, they're, they're going to be slow to lower them. That, that's, that, that appears to be the case. Yeah, that may well be. We spent a lot of time talking about that, as you might imagine, on CNBC. <laughs> yes. Perhaps too much. But when it comes to latency, that takes me to pricing, because you've discussed the lack of latency in your own ability to understand exactly what's going on in the market for those cars, uh, as opposed uh, to yeah. many of the legacy and other yes, yes. competitors. Uh, we, we have real-time information on demand. So, right. um, so we, we know how many people placed an order for a Tesla yesterday. So the, the computer calculates that all, um, and, and literally every day we get um, a you know an automated uh, email to the exec staff that says how many people placed an order in which countries uh, for which cars, uh, and so we, we know what demand we know we know what the orders were, were yesterday, and um, now you, you don't want to overreact to these things because sometimes you get like little dips for you know reasons that are hard to explain. Do you um, look at them every day? Yeah, yeah. But like I said, you don't want to overreact to, to uh, you know, if, if like a week is slow or something, you don't want to overreact to that. Um, but, uh, if you, but, but if you look at the trend, say, for uh, the, the over two two week span or something like that, you can see that, okay, there's this, for, for some reason, uh, the demand is, is uh, less than it was, or, or it's higher. Mm -hmm. um, Do you adjust pricing? To, yeah, yeah. To that? I mean, is that are you, are you almost like an airline at this point in terms of kind of we're, you know we're, we're, dynamic we're, pricing model? Yes. So um, we we we're basically adjust our pricing to to match demand, um, and um, we obviously did a big price drop in Q1. But you know, now January is is usually a terrible time for car buying. Um, so there's the seasonality to car purchases um, with January. January January is often the worst month. Um, so we did we did a big price drop and then and then uh, then recently we, we did we did a price increase. So a, as I mentioned to the audience, uh, the the reality is that uh, all companies do significant all car companies make significant adjustments to price because you've got the MSRP number, um, and then if uh, demand is high, uh, dealers will charge some premium over MSRP. If demand is lower, they will they will have uh, manufacturer incentives. So the, 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 you can actually see a very big difference. Uh, over the course of say six months, uh, between uh, the peak to trough of of all cars, it's just that t Tesla is so immediate and obvious and transparent. It's not a question of MSRP and then markups or discounts. Right. Um, but after your last earnings, a lot of investors came away wanting to talk about your margins and wanting to talk about your pricing. In particular, I think you know you talked about vehicle cost reduction. You sort of even said. It's hard to explain the profundity of technically selling cars now for no profit and still yielding tremendous economics over time. Yes. Um, I'd like you to explain a little bit more of what that means. You did a bit in the meeting as well. You're yeah. talking about sort of the move, I think, from manual to autonomous and the value add that will come along with that. But explain to people why that's profound and why conceivably, not that you want to, you could sell automobiles now for no profit and still make enormous profit in the future. Uh, yeah, so um, Tesla is the only uh, car company selling cars that w where we believe the, the car is capable of achieving full autonomy with a software update. So the, the value of a fully autonomous, uh, or fully autonomous car is, um, we think, um, 
perhaps uh, five times more valuable than a non-autonomous car. Why? Well, uh, the utility of a car, typically a passenger car, is going to be maybe 10, 10 hours a week, maybe 12. Um, uh, if you say like somebody's going to drive uh, an hour and a half a day on average, uh, so maybe at, maybe an, uh, an hour commute per day and then an occasional long trip, but figure it's like t 10, 12 hours yep. a week is typical for um, uh, a passenger vehicle. And then uh, uh, you also have a lot of costs associated with parking. You need a garage, or you've got to buy a parking space, or you've got to get a, you know, get a parking ticket at the, at the mall. It's, there's a lot of costs associated with cars. And uh, now if you've got a car that's autonomous, um, that can go around and essentially be an, like an autonomous Uber, um, the utility, I think, is, is going to be, well, it's going to be much higher, perhaps uh, you know, and this again, this is so speculative. I understand. Um, We're talking about robo taxis here, or at least what people have called and you have called. Yeah, robo -taxis. like an uh, autonomous Uber is, right. is, is the way to think about it. So right. perhaps uh, the utility then would be on the order of 50 hours a week. Mm -hmm. This is just a guess. Say, say like, there's 168 hours in a week, um, and probably, a, a, as a rough guess, an autonomous car is will be able to uh, be active instead of for for 10 hours a week, probably in our, in our view for about 50. Um, right. But it's the same car, so the. And it costs the same to build. But so. you're, I want to understand the business model a little bit because I'm buying the car, and instead of it parking at my lot while I'm working, it goes off and picks people up and drops them off. Yes. Who's making the money from that? I assume that's the value add you're talking about. Is it a revenue share? Do you have this yeah. model sort of planned out specifically as how it would look? Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's been in the test of terms and conditions for, for quite a long time. Oh, it has. Uh, yeah, so uh, the... The owner of the car would make, uh, I don't know, some amount. It, it, who knows what it would be, but perhaps it, it, you know, it could be a 50-50 split or 70-30, I, I don't know. But the, the, the cars are, are, if you buy a Tesla car, it can only be used in a Tesla network. It cannot be used in someone else's network. That, that means that uh, if the car is able to be used five times as much, it, and, and um, it, it, we're, Tesla is likely to make basically two or three times the original value or sale value of the car, um, in in robo taxi revenue, right? right. So this this is this is gigantic. Um, as I said, it'll be like selling cars for software margins, mm -hmm. because in fact it is software. Right. Um, so in, instead of effectively having say uh, twenty five cent uh, margins, it might be seventy, or seventy percent or more. And uh, I mean the, the the free cash flow associated with that it w is actually truly a staggering uh, amount. Um, uh, the, the best analysis that I've seen thus far about this is uh, from uh, Kathy Woods from uh, Ark Invest. Mm -hmm. We know Kathy well. Yeah, That's she's cool. great. Yep. Um, I would assume you like her, obviously. She's been a huge proponent of your stock for many years. Was right, by the way, very early on. She was right. Yeah. Um, uh, I, I, I thought she was being optimistic, but I, I, she turned out to be, in fact, uh, almost spot on. Yeah. Um, and I am familiar somewhat with her analysis. What a lot of investors come back to, or everybody, is, yeah. is your promises of, of full autonomy. Um, and you seem to be saying, again, um, yeah. you've said it before, you know that. Um, um, yes, no, I mean. You said it I, in 19, I, I think about 20. And, you I, know, I, I, sort of, yeah, I've certainly been, um, you know, if, if I, I, I guess I have somewhat of a pathological optimism. Um, well, it works, by the way, because you don't end up with this unless you're optimistic. But yeah, exactly. I mean, who would try to do this and, and this and, and rockets if they, if they weren't pathologically optimistic? No, I, you'd have to be. <laughs> um, yeah. So there's a you know there's a double-edged sword, I guess. Um, but, but but you know, do you ever say to yourself, "All right, I'm getting a little ahead of myself here"? I mean, when you said again, "We're going to have full autonomy." No, I didn't say we will. I said I think, you think, in my opinion, we probably will. Okay. Um, right. There's a number of qualifiers there. I think, in my opinion, we probably will. So what do you think, in your opinion, you probably will? When? I mean, it does look like it's going to happen this year. Why? Well, we're now at the point where um, the car can drive on highways and in cities with, um, and where an, uh, a human intervention is extremely rare. Um, so, I mean, just, I was able to drive for several days. Uh, just dropping a navigation pen in random locations in the greater Austin area with no interventions. And the same in San Francisco, which is a very difficult place to drive. So, I mean, it's, you've got bus lanes, one-way streets, uh, it's, it's, you know, <laughs> so it's, it's quite, quite a challenging homeless situation. Um, you were driving recently in San Francisco where the car was? I, I have been doing, doing that quite a lot because yeah. of Twitter's headquartered uh, Of course. <laughs> <laughs> so. Maybe less, maybe a little less soon.
Yeah. Um, we'll, 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 we'll get to that. But go, go, finish your it, point, it, though, it, in it, terms it does, of why you feel more, why you're optimistic. I'm optimistic for, for that reason, which is that the I, I've actually never, um, this is the, the first time I've had a situation where there's been several days in a row picking random destinations and having no uh, safety-related intervention. Right. It's the first time ever. Um, I want to get to a lot of other topics, but you know, I am curious on Tesla in particular. Um, one thing I haven't heard you discuss is, is the impact on your business of the Inflation Reduction Act. At least I haven't heard it. Maybe you've discussed it. Um, you know, Adam Jonas, who follows your company at Morgan yeah. Stanley, said, we believe the IRA is so advantageous to Tesla in terms of absolute dollars versus the legacy <laughs> OAMs, it could equal as much as 45% of current earnings per share. Is the IRA going to be usually beneficial to your company? I, I th I'm not sure it be, it's going to be that beneficial. Um, uh, there's... Um, there are there are significant advantages for, uh, for uh, having domestic production of batteries, uh, which I think is important uh, for uh, strategic reasons. Uh, for, you know, I think uh, as we move to uh, an electric transport economy, I think it's important for the United States to um, have some independence uh, with respect to battery production, including all of the precursors necessary for a battery. So the the IRA strongly incents that. Um, and I think that will prove to be uh, something of um, important, of, of, of national strategic importance in the future. So I, I, I'm not sure I would say it's as, as good as, say, a 45% increase in uh, earnings per share, or 40%. It, it, it's, it's, uh, Is it significant? It's helpful. Though? Yeah, yeah. Helpful. I, I would say it's m maybe it's uh, half that or something. Okay, uh, but I mean, 20% is, yeah. is quite significant. Yeah. Have you mapped it out at all? Do you have a, a, a sense? I mean, obviously, you talk about storage, for example, which yeah. is so important. You spend time on that as well, the mega pack. Is it beneficial in that particular area beyond, obviously, the, the, the credits, the tax credits that certain people get for buying a Tesla? Yeah, there's, two, there's really two parts to the um, uh, IRA. Uh, there's the uh, incentive for battery manufacturing, um, and it's really quite a detail. It's, it's actually a very well-written uh, well, in, in that it's, it really makes sure that you can't game it, <laughs> you know, so you actually have to build the batteries in, in the U.S. and you actually have to build the precursors to the batteries. But if you do, uh, it is, um, I believe, $30 uh, at, the, at the cell level and $15 at the pack level, I believe, if, if I recall correctly. So uh, that, that, that is uh, very significant for, for batteries. And then you've got the consumer tax credit for EVs, provided they are built in the U.S. Uh, uh, and, and that the pack is built in the U.S. Yeah. So, now, now, this 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 is the really the first time that we've we've actually had the you know t t the, the first time in many years that Tesla's actually had the uh, in consumer tax credit. Yes. Uh, because we actually exceeded the limit for the consumer tax credit several years ago, um, and so up until December uh, or until January this year, I should say, uh, there was no uh, consumer tax incentive to buy a Tesla, uh, but there there was for the other car companies. Uh, because they have not reached, they've not made that many electric cars. Right, they didn't reach their limit. Yeah. Um, you know, before I wrap on Tesla, I, I do, would like to get to China, which is obviously an important market for you. Um, you know, I, I noticed that chart you put up. BYD is the only company that seems to be making money mm -hmm. so far. Um, are you concerned at all about, um, you know, ruthless pricing sort of at the low end in the Chinese market and what that will mean to your market share there? Um, well, uh, currently a limitation um, with. Uh, is the, is, the, is the production rate um, of our Shanghai factory. It's not demand. So, I mean, I, so, so that's, we, we, there are some constraints on our ability to expand in China. Um, and, um, and so it's, we're making as many cars as we can. It's not a demand issue. Uh, and you're going to be making batteries soon as well. Uh, yes, yes. Um, for the, the mega pack, um, for, for mostly for non-U.S. Non markets. Uh, yeah. so. Are you concerned at all about the growing belligerence between China and the U.S.? Um, I think that should be a concern for everyone. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think you're right. I think yeah. it is shared by many people who run large organizations and smaller ones. Do you think, for example, China will, will make a move to take control of Taiwan? The official, the official, the official policy of China is uh, that um, Taiwan should be integrated. One does not need to read between the lines. One can simply read the lines. Do you think that... <laughs> so I, I think there's a certain, there's some inevitability to, to the situation. That would not be good for Tesla, conceivably, or for any, any company in the world, frankly. Yes, for any company in the world. I, the, I, I think most, almost no, no one realizes that uh, uh, the Chinese economy and, and the, global, the rest of the global economy are like conjoined twins. Uh, it, it would be like trying to separate conjoined twins. That, that's the severity of the situation. 
Um, and it's actually uh, worse for for a lot of other companies than it is for for uh, Tesla. I mean, I'm not sure not sure where you're going to get an iPhone, for example. Um, I mean, Apple's recently started doing some some sort of small amount of production in, in India, but it's tiny. Compared it's to tiny. Just, not to mention an advanced semiconductor chip if they take over Taiwan Semi. Correct. So I mean, you design your own chips, but you manufacture them at Taiwan Semi too, right? Uh, we do some. We do. We do. We use Samsung and TSMC, but uh, <laughs> but you seem to think it's it's likely to happen. I'm simply saying that that is their policy, and I think you should take their word seriously. Um, you know, your time. I think you've said. In fact, some of the brief conversations we've had. You know, is one of the most valuable things in your own control. And I am curious now. And Tesla investors sort of seem to rejoice at the announcement of a new CEO at Twitter, in part because they thought, well, he's going to have more time for Tesla. That's true. Uh, is it true? How do you see sort of allocating your time now that you will soon no longer be the CEO of Twitter? Um, yeah. So, um, you know, it, it was it was really a very, very challenging um, situation at the point at which the Twitter acquisition closed because, you know, in rough terms, uh, uh, <laughs> there was a billion and a half dollars of debt servicing that was added, um, while at the same time um, there was a, a massive cy cyclic. Yeah, you, you said you were four months away from bankruptcy. You're yeah. going to lose three billion dollars in a year, conceivably. Well, unless ne negative three billion dollar cash flow and had a billion billion dollars in the bank. Yeah. Um, no, that's not good. No. <laughs> Anybody who knows anything about corporate finance knows no, that's bad. No, I mean, I, I, I'd say like the, the analogy I was using was it's like being teleported into a plane that's in a nosedive, uh, headed to the ground with uh, the engines on fire and the controls don't work. Yeah. And you were the that's guy. What, who that's, chose what, to, that's what it felt like. You chose to get into the plane. <laughs> Well, 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 I did try to exit the deal, and they wouldn't let me. <laughs> wouldn't let, <laughs> I mean, it was it was a you. funny situation where when I, when I first first proposed the acquisition, they said, "Hell no!" They adopted a poison pill, uh, basically saying they'd rather die <laughs> than, than than be than be acquired. Uh, like they'd rather chew on cyanide. <laughs> and then a few months later, that they're like basically have a gun to my head, saying, "No, you must acquire us." Yeah. I mean, that's quite a change. It is quite a change. <laughs> but you seem to think I, I I can figure out a way out of this until finally, I guess you realized I can't. It was made clear to me that the decision would not come down in my favor legally. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, now you have a new CEO. Yes. Um, why? I, I think Linda 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 is going to be great. Why? Um, well. Uh, uh, Twitter is, is is very much an advertising dependent uh, business. Uh, Linda is obviously incredible at that, and she's just a great executive in general. Um, so, and um, you know, my my, my skills and uh, interests are in technology. Um, so, uh, you know, I'll continue to to, to play a role uh, advancing the software, um, and um, you know, you know, getting the features and fun pro product stuff basically. Right. Um, I mean, the, the general idea is Linda, Linda will operate the company, and, and, and I will build products. Yeah, uh, and that's I think that's that, that's a good that's a good. And that will take less of your time. Yeah, and I have I, I have that situation at uh, SpaceX. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Gwen Shotwell, who's who's right. amazing, yep. um, uh, you know, operates the company, and I and I, I work on the, the sort of advanced technology, um, right? Well, sort of designing the new rockets and that kind of thing, and. And that, that's, uh, you know, everyone should play to their strengths, and that's, that's, that's mine. That's true, although I wonder, you mean, in 2021, you said you spent most of your time on the development of Starship. I think yes. you've also been quoted, I read, or I think I heard you say, actually, tw uh, most of your mental energy at certain points has been on Starship. Yes. So I wonder, have you been diverted from Starship a little bit and will return to it as the main focus, or is it Tesla? Uh, you know, again, your time... I know, having tried to schedule this interview with yeah, you. Yeah, time, time triage is a, a real thing for me. Yeah. Um, in fact, I, 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 the, 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 I'd say that the only real currency is time. Time is the only true currency. So where are you going to spend the currency now that you don't have to spend as much at Twitter? Um, well, I, I'm going to be devoting a lot more time to, to Tesla, okay. um, and um, especially on, on the AI development um, and uh, new, new product development. And, and then there's, and, and I'll also be allocating some more time to uh, getting Starship to orbit. The, in, in the case of SpaceX, um, uh, what I was able to do there was to, t uh, as, as the Starlink uh, constellation uh, started working, I was able to move some of the, the best people from the Starlink program to the Starship program. Um, so uh, they, they were, you know, the, the, the timing kind of worked out well uh, that, that um, I mean, we have really some, 
of the world's best engineers uh, at SpaceX and Tesla. Uh, really some incredible human beings. There was some statistic you shared, I think 3.6 million people applied for a job at Tesla. I think I, didn't, I wrote it down. I didn't write it down here, so let's remember. But that, was that the number? Yeah, it's crazy. Uh, we, we, there's a lot of demand. Yeah, they are. So, 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 we have um, 127, almost 128,000 employees, but 3.6 million people applying for a job in a um, year. Yes, and I mean, there's, you know, we, we would only add like, say, 20 or 30,000 jobs. So it's, it's, a, it's sort of, it, the, the acceptance rate for, for Tesla is, is it's much more difficult to get into Tesla or SpaceX than Harvard. The acceptance rate is is even lower. Or, like, or like Stanford too. One, one, <laughs> well, yeah, it's 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 the acceptance rate is lower than, than the most uh, demanding universities in the world. Yeah. It's insane. Speaking of employment, though, you had 7,800 people at Twitter when the plane was nosediving. I think you're at 1,500 now. That's so correct. roughly 6,300 people. Were they all superfluous? Uh, no, not all. <laughs> so, do you figure out which ones aren't, or is it a little late? You know, sometimes it gets a little late. I mean, look, desperate times call for des desperate measures. So um, the, the, there's no question that uh, some of the people who were let go probably shouldn't have been let go because we, we simply did not have the time to figure out. Uh, we had to be, you know, make, make widespread cuts uh, to get the burn rate under control. So. Um, you know, and uh, so so this is not to say that hey, everyone who is let go from Twitter is like somehow terrible or something. It's just we we have to with very little information um, get get the the uh, the headcount expenses and, and the the, the non-personnel expenses down at, uh, to where we're at least break even. And uh, we're not we're not quite a break even yet, but we're but we're close. And uh, we need to do it, to do it fast. And and if you, if you if you do it fast, unfortunately, there are going to be some babies uh, thrown out with yeah. the bathwater. So, so I, definitely, I definitely would not want to say, uh, uh, you know, uh, disparage, uh, you know, any, anyone who's uh, left. But it's funny, you know, I hear from other, I've heard from other tech CEOs quietly. They look at what you did at Twitter and they sort of, they won't admit it publicly, but they, you know, they say, wow, that was something. I mean, to cut that deeply and still be able to sure. run the company. People will argue about how well or things are sure. running. Have you heard from any of these CEOs who said thank you for doing that, giving us sort of <laughs> runway or leeway to at least make some cuts of our own? Um, I, I have I've heard that from a few people, and and I've heard that through the grapevine, yeah. Um, but um, like I said, I, if, if desperate times call for desperate measures, right. and unfortunately th those were desperate times. So do you see starting to? I mean, will Linda hire people? Do you think? Or are you yeah, ready yeah, for absolutely. people to be hired at Twitter? Yeah, no, I, I think we we absolutely um, uh, need to need to hire people and. And, and if they're not too mad at us, probably rehire some of the people that <laughs> they will let go. <laughs> um, and they're going to have to come into the office. Look, I, I, I'm a big believer that, 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 that people need to are more productive when they're in person. Um, and, um, and, 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 and really, man, I, and the, whole, the whole sort of work from home thing, it's like, it, it, I, I, I think it's... To, Look, there are some exceptions, but I, I kind of think that, that the whole notion of work from home is, is a bit like the, you know, the, 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 the fake Marie Antoinette quote, let them eat cake. It's like, it's like really, you're going to work from home and you're going to make everyone else who made your car come work, to the fa work in the factory? You're going to make the people who make your food that gets delivered, that they, they can't work from home? The, you know, the, the, the people that, that come fix your house, they, they can't work from home, but you can? Does that seem morally right? That's messed up. You see it as a moral issue? Yes. I mean, I see it more as and just it's a, a, it's, a, a, it's, it's a productivity issue, but yeah. it's also a moral issue. People should get off the goddamn uh, moral high horse with the work from home bullshit. Um, because they're asking everyone else to not work from home while they do. And yet it's there's, wrong. there's still pushback, by the way. It's still yeah. going on. This battle is still happening. I mean, leaders of organizations, and I speak to plenty of them, I want people back. I want people back. Three days a week, they're still battling. Uh, it, it's not clear that yeah. it's ever going to change to... People are not coming back no, no, five no, days look, a week. Look, people, the, 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 the laptop class is living in La La Land, okay? The, as I said, the, you, you, you can't, but look at the cars. Are people working from, from home here? Of course not. Um, so, the, so the people were, were, you know, building cars, servicing the cars, uh, building houses, fixing houses, uh, making the food, um, making all the things that, 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 that people consume. It's, it's messed up to assume that, that, that this, they have to go to work, but you don't. How is that? Th that is, it's not just a productivity thing. I think it's morally, mor morally wrong. Although productivity is definitely impacted, too. And the ability people yes, to learn. I, I and agree. I mean, on and on. Uh, listen, I, I So, I, I mean, look, you, but, you know, people will disagree with me about this, but I, you know, it's like. So if you want to work at Tesla, you want to work at SpaceX, you want to work at Twitter, 
you got to come into the office every week. Yes, I mean, you know, like I'm not saying, um, I'm, I'm, I'm saying like, look, put 40 hours in, you know, and it, frankly, it doesn't even need to be like, you know, Monday through Friday, you know, you could work Monday through Thursday. And I'm also not saying no one should take, I mean, I think people should take vacations. Like, like I work seven days a week, but, but I, I'm not expecting others to do that. Um, How much sleep do you get, by the way? Uh, about six hours. You do? Six hours, typically? Yes. No, that's not bad. I thought it would be less. Uh, I've tried less, but uh, I, uh, my productivity, my, even though I'm awake more hours, I get less done. Okay. And, but you and, work and, and the brain pain level is bad if, is. if I get less than six hours. But you work seven days a week. Yes. Yeah. I, I actually only, um, in, in terms of actually, you say, like, how, how many days in a year do I not put in some meaningful amount of work? It's probably about two or three. Two or three days? A year. Yeah. A year. Yeah. Yes. I want to get to some more specific questions about Twitter that sort of have a more global aspect. And I still want to get to AI. Are you going to give us some time here? Can we still? Um, yeah, I think we've got a board meeting coming up, but uh, I'm happy to give as much time as reasonably possible. I think it's maybe at 6 or something. Okay. Well, let's, what um, time is it now? It's 5.42. All right. I love another 20. Can you spare yeah, another yeah, 20? Yeah, sure, sure. All right. At least 20. Great. Um, let's talk about free speech a bit. You know, you call yourself a free speech absolutist. You want Twitter, and this is a I mean, aspirationally. Aspirationally, you want Twitter to be as truthful as possible, most yeah. accurate source of information about the world. So what does that mean for how you police lies on the platform? You mentioned community notes. Is that the I think, extent of I think community notes, yeah. I mean, I'd say, so my overall kind of vision for X or Twitter is uh, to be a cybernetic collective mind for humanity. This is going to sound quite esoteric and sci-fi, but so the if if you know in, in pursuit of that objective, uh, you want to have uh, information move quickly, have that information be uh, accurate, and you want to have error correction on that information. So you can think of community notes as like an error correction uh, on information in the network. Um, and the effect of community notes is actually bigger than it would seem. It's, it's bigger than the number of notes uh, because if somebody knows that they're going to get noted. Uh, they are less likely to say something that is false uh, because it's embarrassing to get community noted. Okay. But if and, and, those, and that applies even to advertisers, by it, the way. Right. We, we've, we've, we've lost, uh, at this, <laughs> thus so far, $40 million in advertising. Um, because, because it was misleading or because the because, community uh, notes said it the, was? The community notes, they get the, 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 two, two pretty big advertisers got community noted. Um, and I, I, I yes, um, I think on balance the community notes were correct. Um, and, and I, did, I did say to those advertisers, look, provide, just go on Twitter and provide uh, some facts that uh, contradict the community note. That's the way to deal with the community note, is, right. to say, is, is that the community note is saying that the ad is misleading for the following reasons. If you've got information that uh, rebuts that uh, note, then just add that to the ad. Okay. Uh, well, we're coming up on an election. I mean, it's a ways away, but it's going to all start. Um, yeah. President Trump is allowed back on the platform. He hasn't actually come back. Right. But one would imagine if and when he does, or there are others who will say 2020 election was rigged. Is that something, I assume that's not something you believe. I, well, I think the, 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 answer, the, the answer is, is, is nuanced. It, it, like, do, do I believe uh, uh, Biden won? Um, yes, I believe he won. And you voted for him. I did, actually. In, do you Trump, regret that? I mean, man. I, I wish we could have just a normal human being as president. That's what I want. I think if, 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 if we could, you know, there's that, that old saying of like, we're better, we're better off being run by, um, uh, by people picked at random from the phone book than the faculty of Harvard. Yeah. I don't know who said that, but it was someone very wise. Um, and and I, 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 would, I would say if we could do that for the president, that, that would you be great. You think that would be I beneficial? Just, so you're not, obviously you're not happy with Biden. Don't we all just want a normal human being to be whatever the president? Whatever that means. Whatever. You know, I'm not even sure uh, anymore what normal means. No, but I mean, like, you know, just, I don't know, just a... You want somebody who's competent. Yeah, That's you, helpful. Yes, I, I think uh, def definitely um, somebody's executive ability is underrated since the president is effectively the chief executive officer of the country. Um, it, it actually matters if they are a good ex executive officer. Yeah. It's, it's not simply a matter of do they share your beliefs and, the, you know, um, but, but are they good at, at getting things done? There's a lot of decisions that need to be made every day. Um, many of them are unrelated to uh, moral beliefs, um, you know. Right. And, um, and you just want a good executive. Because <laughs> they're, they're CEO of America. They are. They so are. We want a good CEO of America who's going to do be an effective 
Uh, Unfortunately, so, so. we live in highly partisan times uh, where there is war about everything, yeah. including ideas, including the truth, which gets back to it's not true that the election in 2020 was rigged. It wasn't stolen. And I wonder on the platform I, when you see yes. that. Does that end up in a community note, or is that something you take more action on? And obviously, that applies yes. to so many. I mean, to be clear, I, 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 I don't think it, it, it was it was a stolen election. Um, um, but by the same token, if, if somebody's going to say that there's there was never any election fraud anywhere, this is obviously also false. Yeah. Um, if if you if you, if a hundred million people vote, the probability that the fraud is zero is zero. There's going oh, to be no, of course, there's always going to be some. A little. Is it going to, right. I mean, uh, the tiniest bit, is, perhaps. I mean, there were, this election was audited. It was so many judges. Sure. I mean, it went on and on and on. And there was no nothing whatsoever that I don't um, want to debate this with you. My question is more about. I think it's important to say, like, th th that in any given election, even if you try your hardest, if you've got 100 million votes, there's going to be some, some amount of fraud that is not zero. And, and that, th that, it's important to acknowledge that without saying that, that the fraud was of su sufficient magnitude to change the outcome. Mm -hmm. so, uh, so my opinion would be that there was, some, there was some small amount of fraud, but it was not enough to change the right. outcome. Right, and by the way, it might have been either way. I mean, I, you know. Yeah, this yeah. is probably a little bit of either But way. again, it's going to be, you're going to let people say that, though, on, the, on Twitter, and then you're going to hope that they're corrected. In they will be corrected. Notes. They will be. Oh, yeah, 100%. Um, <laughs> <laughs> let's talk a bit about your tweets. Um, because it comes up a lot. Um, even today, it, it came up in you know, anticipation of this. I mean, um, you know, you do some tweets that seem to be, or at least give support to some who would call others conspiracy theories. Well, yes, but I mean, honestly, you know, we, we, some of these conspiracy theories uh, have turned out to be true. Which ones? Well, like the, the Hunter Biden laptop. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. So. But uh, you know that, that 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 was a pretty big deal. There was th th Twitter and 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 others engaged in active suppression of information that was relevant to the public. Um, that's that's a that's a terrible thing that happened. That's like an interference. But how do you make a choice? You don't see. I mean, in terms of when you're going to engage. I mean, for example, even today, Elon, you you, you tweeted this thing about George Soros. Well, I'm looking for it because I want to make sure I quote it properly. But I mean, you know what you wrote, but. You basically, I said it reminds me of Magneto. This is like, you know, calm down, people. This is not like made a federal well, case said, out of it. You also, you, know, <laughs> you said he wants to erode the very fabric of civilization, and Soros hates humanity. Like when you do something like that, do you? Yeah, think I think about, that's true. That's my opinion. Okay, but why share it? Why share it? Especially, be, I mean, why share it when people who buy Teslas may not agree with you, advertisers on Twitter may not agree with you. Um, why not just say, hey, I think this. You can tell me. We can talk about it over there. You can tell your friends. But why share it widely? I mean, uh, I, this is freedom of speech. I'm allowed to say what I want. You wanted. absolutely are. But I'm trying to understand why you do, because you have to know it's got a, there, it, it puts you in, a, in the middle of a the partisan divide in the country. It makes you a, a lightning rod for criticism. I mean, do you like that? I, you know, people today are saying he's an anti-Semite. I don't think you are. No, I'm definitely not. I'm, I'm, like, I'm like a pro-Semite, <laughs> if anything. <laughs> I, I believe that probably is the case. Yes. But why would you even introduce the idea of that, that that would be the, the case? I, I mean, look, we, we don't want to make this a, a George Soros interview. No, um, God, no. I, so, don't, I don't want to uh, at all. But I'm, what I'm trying, even came up, though, in the annual meeting. I mean, you know, do your tweets hurt the company? Are there Tesla owners who say, I don't agree with his political position because, and I know it because he shares so much. Or are there advertisers on Twitter that Linda Yaccarino will come and say, you got to stop, man. Or, you know, I can't get these ads because of some of the things you tweet. You know, I'm reminded of uh, the, the, the scene in The Princess Bride. Great movie. Great movie. Um, he confronts the person who killed his father. And he says, offer me money, offer me power. I don't care. So you just don't care. You want to share what you have to say. I'll say what I want to say, and if if if, uh, if the consequence of that is losing money, so be it. But I mean, when you when you when you link to somebody who's talking about the guy who killed children in a mall in, in Allen, Texas, and you, you say something like it might be a bad psyop. I'm not quite sure what you meant. But oh, uh, in, in that particular case, there was. Uh, so, somehow, that, that, that's not, not, not that the, 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 that the, the obviously people, people were killed, but the, it was, I think, incorrectly ascribed to be a white supremacist action. And the evidence for that uh, was some obscure Russian website that no one's ever heard of that had no followers. And the, the, the company that, came, that found this is Bellingcat. Right. And do you know what Bellingcat does? PsyOps. Right. 
I couldn't really even follow exactly what it was you were trying to express there, so that's in part why I was curious. I'm, but I'm saying that I thought this, the, 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 the ascribing it to white supremacy was bullshit. Okay. And, and, uh, and, 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 and that the information for that uh, came from an obscure Russian website and was somehow magically found by Bellingcat, which is a company that does psyops. And there's no proof, by the way, that he was not. There's no, I, I would say that there's no proof that he is. And that's a debate you want to get into on Twitter? Because we should not be ascribing things to white supremacy uh, if, if, they're, if it's false. Um, can we talk about AI now? Sure. Actually, I want to talk about AI. Well, let me end with Twitter in the sense of Sam Altman was on the Hill today. And he said AI's ability to manipulate interactive disinformation is a significant area of concern. It's, it's yes. moving so quickly. It, it is a significant how, area of concern. And how, you know, I, yeah, I'm curious as to whether you agree with that, how you see that even playing out on Twitter with people who... Yeah. No, somebody could you know, so, look so, like you and, 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 or me and use our voice. I don't know what it could be. Oh, that, 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 that is happening big time. Um, so the, 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 so the, the, the reason that I'm um, uh, asking people to be verified on, on Twitter and, and, um, and, and that we're uh, saying, okay, verification means you've got a phone number from a reputable carrier, uh, which means that you've at least passed through whatever their uh, uh, security mechanisms are, that you have a, a credit card which, so you now um, have uh, passed through whatever security mechanisms the, the credit card company has, and that there's some small amount of money paid per month. Um, uh, well, th that, that set of actions um, uh, significantly increases the cost of, of, of fake accounts. The, with, with, modern, with, with, with the latest AI, um, it can bypass basically every test for are you a human. Right. So, so then how do you know that a, a million accounts were created? How do you know that those are people? I and, don't know. And, How do you? Exactly. You, you, have, to do, you have to do account verification. The, and, and the thing that makes, the, the, I, like, if, I, I sort of put myself in the position of, like, if it was my goal to uh, manipulate public opinion um, and create millions of accounts and make it seem as though a topic was trending um, and, and, that, and that this is actually what the public believes. Um, and, but in order to do so, I, I had to ha get a million phone numbers, a million credit card numbers, and pay, uh, you know, uh, eight bucks a month, right? Um, and 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 have that all not be traceable and clustered. I'd say it's impossible, impossible. So the the goal of the uh, of, of the sort of Twitter verification is fundamentally to prevent AI manipulation of the system. Got it. Um, final question on Twitter. Uh, Walter Isaacson, your biographer, he said your big goal for Twitter is disrupting the banking. Oh uh, well, is that accurate? Um, I, I'd say that's 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 a that's a I, look. First of all, I, I don't want to disrupt something for the sake of, sake of disrupting it. It's more like if, if there is a better product, that's great. But I'm not out for disruption for the sake of disruption. Um, I'm like, if, if we can make a product that improves uh, quality of life for people that uh, they find more useful, that that's great. Um, and um, uh, what what people see in PayPal is sort of like a, sort of a halfway. Uh, it's sort of a sort of a, it's frankly ha sort of a half baked version of what it could be. Um, and, um, and so I think there's potential to create um, uh, a, a more efficient financial uh, system. Um, and, and here we can get, again, quite, quite esoteric uh, and sort of into sort of information theory. But um, the, the actual financial system today uh, is a heterogeneous set of databases uh, running on mainframes and COBOL um, that still engage in batch processing. It's really quite uh, uh, very inefficient. Um, um, things are still not real time. Um, and, and so it's possible to have um, a, a much more efficient, uh, homogenous, real-time uh, data system. Money is just information. And, um, and so the, so, but, but that's not like the only reason. It's, it's just a thing that, that would be, I think, poetic to fulfill ultimately the vision that I had for X uh, in, uh, over 23 years ago. Um, right. and, and, and actually see that come to fruition would, would be nice. But, but there are many other things uh, for, for Twitter. It's, it's not just uh, financial. So. Well, you, you talk about enhancing humanity. Uh, you know, I'm curious then about AI, uh, which many people say will lead to great productivity gains. You showed those robots. I mean, I can imagine what they conceivably could do when powered by AI. But I'm also curious, because you've certainly been concerned, what percentage do you give the chance that it will destroy humanity? Well, the, the advent of artificial general intelligence is um, called a singularity because uh, it is so hard to predict what will happen after that. It, it, I think it's, it's, it's very much a double-edged double sword. I think in, it's, there's, there's, a, there's a strong probability that it will make life much better. 
uh, and that we'll have an age of abundance, and, and there's some chance that it goes wrong um, and uh, destroys humanity. Hopefully that chance is small, but it's not zero. Um, and so I think we want to take whatever actions we can think of to minimize the probability that AI goes wrong. And you've called for a pause, along with a number of other people. Yes, I, I, look, when I called for the... Yeah, <laughs> a, friend, a friend of mine, Max Tegmark, is a physicist at, at, at uh, MIT, um, you know, wanted me to sign on to the letter. And it's, it's like, I, th I, I knew it would be futile. Uh, it is futile. There's it's never, futile. There's I, I knew it would be futile. I just want to call it like, it's one of those things, well, for the record, I recommended that we pause. Okay. Uh, did, did I think we would, there would be a pause? Absolutely not. Well, <laughs> so, but um, you're, you're starting uh, XAI, I, I think that's what you're calling it, or some new AI effort. Um, well, how is it going to be different than OpenAI or Alphabet? This, this is this is not the time to to this uh, is not I, I we don't have enough time and, and, and nor is this the moment to really talk about it. Okay. Um, we we will have a launch event and, and we'll explore the the issues uh, in, in more detail. But um, I, I should say that that uh, and, I, and I mentioned this at the shareholder meeting that um, Tesla has actually um, a, a tremendous capability in real world AI. Yes. In fact, it is very far ahead of. Of any, any. I know people actually on Twitter prior to our interview were saying, you know, he never gets asked about how advanced his AI is at Tesla. You always talk about Tesla AI is, uh, like I said, by, it's like is it, there's not. I'm not even sure who's second, frankly. Um, why is that? Why, then what? Is, what are people not understanding about what you have, and why are we talking so much about ChatGPT and generative AI at OpenAI and what Microsoft's going to be able to do with it, and not about Tesla? I don't know. I mean, people do talk about it online. Um, I think I think Tesla will have sort of a chat GPT moment. Maybe the, if, if not this year, I'd say no later than next year. Um, Wait, say that again. I'm sorry. You're, you're going to have a sort of, a sort of chat GPT moment. Oh, you will. In terms of suddenly it will. Yeah, suddenly three million cars will be able to drive themselves right. with no one. Right. It goes back to that. Right. Yeah, and then five million cars, and then ten million cars. So um, the, the and, and 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 I would I would also say that um, if if positions were reversed um, and say. Um, well, in fact, the positions are, are reversed. For, for example, G Google has Waymo, which is, uh, uh, you know, uh, sort of attempting self-driving. And they are able to make self-driving work in a very limited uh, geography with, with very tightly mapped streets. But as soon as, any, as, soon as there's anything goes r wrong with those streets, like there's an accident or a parade or road construction, uh, it's, right. it stops working. It, basically, uh, uh, Google is unable to, to, to produce a generalized solution to self-driving that works anywhere. They've been trying to do that for a long time. They've been unsuccessful. Tesla, Tesla basically has that and, and, and is, is, is far more advanced th th than Google. Yeah. And so if the positions were reversed and you said, okay, um, uh, Tesla's got to produce a, a large language model that has output uh, equal to or greater than uh, ChatGPT, uh, or Microsoft OpenAI has to do self-driving, and we, we, just, we, fl we flip the tasks, Tesla would win. You'd win? Yes. And you have the computing power and everything else you yeah. need to do it? Absolutely. Um, I'm being told we don't have that much time. Do you, can you give me another five minutes? Or <laughs> yeah, what do you think? Yeah, I you think can. so. Okay. The, 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 I do have a board meeting. I know. But, I would, uh, I, but I, five, five minutes is probably fine, sure. Okay, thank you. Um, OpenAI, I mean, you seem somewhat frustrated with them. You were one of the big contributors early on. The, the reason, I, I am the reason OpenAI exists. Um, How much money did you give them? Um, so, uh, I, I, I'm not sure the exact number, but it's some, some number on, on the order of $50 million. Uh, so, so the, the <laughs> man, fate loves irony, next level. Um, I used to be close friends with Larry Page, and I would stay at his house, and we'd have these conversations long into, long into the evening um, about AI, and I, I, would, I would be constantly urging him to be careful about the danger of, of AI, and, um, and, and, and he, he, just, he was really not concerned about the danger of AI and was quite cavalier about it. Um, and, um, and, and, and at, at the time, uh, Google, especially after their acquisition of DeepMind, had three quarters of the world's AI talent. They had obviously a lot of computers and a lot of money. Um, so it was a unipolar world for, for AI. And, and we've got a unipolar world, but, but the, the person who, who controls that does not, or at least did, did not seem to be concerned about AI safety. That, that, sound, that sounded like a real problem. So, and, and then the final straw was, uh, Larry calling me a speciesist uh, for being um, pro-human consciousness <laughs> instead of machine consciousness. And I'm like, well, yes, I guess I am. I, 
I am a speciesist, and and, and uh, so and, right. And, so you helped <laughs> to the creation of OpenAI. You put yeah, in as so much as fifty million dollars. More than helped. It wouldn't exist without it me. It wouldn't exist without you. So um, I came up with a name. Right. Uh, the name uh, o uh, OpenAI refers to open source. Um, so, so the intent was: what's the okay? So what was the opposite? What's the opposite of um, of Google? Would would be a an open source nonprofit because Google is closed source for profit, and that profit motivation can be potentially dangerous. So, uh, should you have gotten governance for that money? Should you have gotten some level of control, perhaps, in retrospect? Yeah, I, I, I fully admit to being a huge idiot here. Anyway, so, so OpenAI was like meant to be open, AI, open as an open source. Uh, it was created as a 501c3. Um, and, um, but, but I, so, so part of it is also in the beginning, I thought, look, this is, this is probably a hopeless endeavor. How could we possibly compete with, uh, how, how could OpenAI possibly compete with, with Google DeepMind? I mean, this, this seemed like an ant against an elephant, you know, which is not, not, not a contest. And, um, and, and I was also, uh, the, the, I mean, I, 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 I was instrumental in, in recruiting the, the, the key uh, scientists and engineers, most specifically, most notably, uh, Ilya Sutskaya. In fact, um, uh, Ilya went back and forth several times because he, he would say he's going to join OpenAI, then Demis would convince him not to, then I, I would convince him to do so, and then and this went back and forth several times, and ultimately he decided to join OpenAI. And, and really, uh, uh, Ilya joining was the was was the linchpin for right. uh, OpenAI being ultimately successful. So you're very disappointed in what's happened there in terms of it becoming a for-profit. I, I, I would any say action. I, I, I would them say, in some way. I, I I do think that there's some. I, I, look, it does seem weird that something can be um, a non-profit. Uh, open source and somehow transform itself into a for-profit closed source. Um, I mean, this would be like, like, let's say you funded an organization to save the Amazon rainforest, and instead they became a, a lumber company <laughs> and chopped down the forest and sold it for money. And you'd be therefore like, well, wait a second, that's uh, the exact opposite of what I gave the money for. Yeah. Uh, is that legal? That doesn't seem legal. Uh, and. If it is, and, and in general, if it is legal to uh, start a, a company as a nonprofit and then take the IP and transfer it to a for profit that then makes tons of money, um, shouldn't everyone start? Shouldn't that be the default? Right. Um, and, and, and then I also think it's important to understand the, the like, like, when push comes to shove, let's say they do create some, some digital super intelligence, almost godlike intelligence, well, who's in control? And, and what ex exactly is the relationship between OpenAI and Microsoft? Um, and I do worry that uh, Microsoft actually may be more in control than, say, the leadership team at OpenAI realizes. Um, I mean, Microsoft, ha as part of the Microsoft investment, they have uh, rights to all of the software, all of the model weights, and everything necessary to run the inference system. So they essentially have a great deal of control. At any point, Microsoft could cut off OpenAI. Um, Elon, I'm being told we have to wrap up. Your board has been very um, <laughs> sure. patient. I, I want to end on one AI question. You have a lot of kids. I have some kids. I have one who's actually um, soon to go into the workforce. I struggle with how to advise him about a career when this technology exists and will only improve. I'm just curious, when you think about advising your children on a career with so much that is changing, what do you tell them is going to be a value? That is a tough question to answer. I guess... Um I would just say, you know, to, to sort of follow their heart in terms of what they, they find um, interesting to do or fulfilling to do and, um, you know, try to be as useful as possible to the rest of society. You know, if, if we do get to the sort of like magic genie situation where um, you can ask the AI for, for anything, and, and let's say it's even the benign scenario, let, let's say it's a benign scenario, how do we actually find fulfillment? You know, it's, uh, how do we find meaning in life if uh, the AI could do your job better than you can? I mean, if I think about it too hard, it, frankly, it can be uh, dis dispiriting and uh, demotivating because, I mean, I, I go through, I, I mean, I, I put a lot of blood, sweat, and tears into building the companies, and then, it, and then I'm like, wait, well, sh should I be doing this? Because if I'm sacrificing time with friends and family that I would prefer to, to, to do, but, but then ultimately the AI can do all these things, does that make sense? I, I don't know. Um, <laughs> to some extent, I have to have deliberate suspension of disbelief in order to, be, to remain motivated. So I, I guess I would say just, you know, work on things that you find interesting, fulfilling, and, um, 
and, and that contribute uh, some good to the rest of society. Well, that's a great place to end. There's so much we didn't get to. I hope you'll give me another chance to sit down with you. But Elon, thank you for being so generous with your time. Thanks to your board for waiting as well. And thanks for having us here at this incredible facility. Appreciate right. it. Thank you. You're welcome. All right.